Hello there and welcome to our next computer science video. Now we move on to topic four, which is all about data representation. In this video, we're going to look at what binary is, the different number systems we need for our exams, the actual storage these numbers will take up, and the data types themselves. So, without any more delay, let's get started. The first thing that we're going to look at is what a bit, a byte, and a word is. I'm going to use these words interchangeably throughout the video, so we need to know what they mean. A bit, a byte, and a word are just different amounts of binary numbers grouped together. A bit is short for binary digit and is simply a single binary digit being a 1 or a 0. Nice and simple, right? Four of these single bits make up what we call a nibble. A nibble is just half a byte. So that means to make a full byte, we need eight bits or two nibbles. A word is just a group of bits that can be manipulated as a single unit. The size of a word is sometimes referred to as the word length. And this could be 16, 32, 64, or even 128 bits and so on. But all this depends on your processor. The bigger the words are, the faster the operations of your processor. And this is because we can take in or output more information at one time. So now we've finished that section, let's talk about the different bases that we need to cover for our exam. And the key to this is to keep it simple. Students often make really simple mistakes that if we get our foundations right, we're not going to make. So there's three different bases that the exam board want us to cover. Base 10, base 2, and base 16. Now you can tell that a number's in base 10 by looking at the small subscript underneath the actual number itself. That is the base. So 24 with a small 10, that means it's 24 in base 10. And it goes up in the single units, the tens, the hundreds, the thousands, and etc. That's what we're used to. Base 2 is our normal binary system. It's 0 or 1. And it all goes up in the power of 2, which we'll see later. Base 16 has a small subscript 16. And this is not the same as base 10. Be really, really careful in your exam because I've seen students get this mixed up time and time again. So like I said, base 10 is our normal numbering system that will go right through our numbers from 1 up to infinity. Base 2 starts at 1, then goes up in the powers of 2. So it's 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, and it'll keep going and keep going. Top tip is to always draw the binary scale above your binary numbers. So for example, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0 means we take 1, 16 and 1, 8 and add them together, and that represents the number 24. Now it's slightly different for our base 16 numbers. The maximum we can have here is 15 because we use four bits or one nibble to represent numbers. So we can take up to one to nine in our normal numbers, and then everything after nine becomes a letter. So 10 would represent A, 11 would represent B, 12 would represent C, 13 D, 14 E, 15 F, and that's where we have to stop because our maximum is 15. But we'll see more on that later. Well, you might be thinking, well, what's the point in using these base systems? Well, base 2 is obviously used in computers as zeros and ones. Uh, base 10 is what we count in. And base 16 is actually used as shorthand for binary numbers. And this is easier for humans to understand. So it's kind of a middleman between base 10 and base 2. And we don't want to write directly in base 2 because it's very easy to make a mistake when we're writing binary. Now for the specification, something that we need to look at is the storage of characters and character sets. So each character, and I'm talking alphabetical character, has its own unique binary number. And there's a few commands also thrown in there. Now imagine a world where we didn't have a set convention for all our different characters and character sets. 
So every different character had a binary number, but we didn't have an agreement on which character set we used. Well, it would be chaos. So what we did is we agreed to use the American Standard Code for Information Interchange, and that was abbreviated into ASCII. Now ASCII uses seven bits, and that means we have a maximum of 128 characters, because if we add one, two, four, 8, 16, 32, and 64 together, it gives us 128 different combinations. Now in standard ASCII, there is 95 characters and 33 control characters, such as delete or insert. So that is a disadvantage for us because it only stores 128 characters, but they are English characters. Think about different languages. The good thing for us was the technology at the time advanced and we could now have 16, 32, 64 bit word lengths. And that meant we could add an extra bit onto our character set. But that only left us with 256 combinations and it's still not good enough. So what was the fix? Well, it's something called Unicode. Languages like Arabic, Chinese or Hebrew have much bigger alphabets than English. And Unicode uses four bytes. And remember, a byte is eight bits. And that gives us a combination of 110,000 characters. That is plenty enough for everybody to use. So the last thing to get stuck into before we get into the nitty gritty of the mathematics of data representation is data types and storage requirements. So the different data types that we need to look at for the specification is a character or a char, a string, a boolean, an integer, and a real. So a character is a single character. It's as simple as that. So we have an A, it could be a three, it could be a plus symbol or an at symbol, and that is simply it, but it must be a single character. A string is a string of multiple characters. Usually you can tell a string by its speech marks. A boolean is a true or a false. An integer is a number between a given range and it can be a positive or a negative number. A real has a decimal point in the number itself and again it can be positive or negative but it will have a decimal point. We need to look at how much space these data types actually take up. So a character will take up one byte in an ASCII character set, but it will take four bytes in Unicode. A string is the number of characters you've got multiplied by one byte if it's an ASCII character set or four bytes if it's a Unicode character set. A Boolean is the most efficient of all data types. It only contains or takes up one bit. An integer is two bytes, so that's 16 bits, and you can get a range of 65,535 in your integer. And the storage requirements for a real usually depends on the size of the word length. And this is because floating point numbers, or numbers with decimal points in them, usually depend on the mantissa and the exponent sizes. But don't worry if you don't know what they are. I don't expect you to know those yet because they're coming up in a later video. So now we've got a fair chunk of the specification out the way. In the next couple of videos, we're going to look at a few different things. The next one being how to convert from deanery to binary to hexadecimal and then back through all three. So hopefully you can join me in the next video as we continue on through this topic.